to video number two of our 26 part video series all on unified endpoint management. My name is Jason Rutherford and I'm the managing partner of Model Technology Solutions based in St. Louis, Missouri. If you have not watched video number one of this series yet, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. While this video is a what I would qualify as a more basic video, a core foundational video of the series, you'll get an overview of what the maturity model is that's more in depth than what we're gonna go through today. For this video, I'll run through introductions rather quickly. We'll give a brief overview of unified endpoint management. We'll talk a little bit about the maturity model phases and categories, and then we will cover our management infrastructure level one. So Model Technology Solutions is based in St. Louis, Missouri. We're a Microsoft Gold partner. We have three divisions, a consulting division or as a project division to identify, design, build, and deploy technology. We have a service division or a managed services division to operationalize, upgrade, monitor, automate technology. And then we have an IP division, which is custom development, to continue the automation, optimize, and innovate technology. All of this is really structured around unified endpoint management or devices. So what is UEM? So traditionally, a UEM um, term would apply to a single platform for management of devices. A model, we look at it just a little differently, and we apply processes to the management platform, really taking into consideration your organization's security needs, your application needs, to enable productivity and reduce those risks or potential risks as part of it. With that, we created a UEM maturity model. The UEM maturity model uses phases that are not necessarily unique to this model, but the categories underneath are certainly unique. Today, we're going to be covering the initial phase in what is the category of a management infrastructure. I would encourage you at this point, if you have not watched video number one, to go back and watch video number one to get more of an understanding of the maturity model phases and those categories underneath. So again, this is kind of a core foundational basic intro level, introduction level to management infrastructure. But that's where we need to start for the purpose of the video series. The maturity model output, uh, as we designed it, gives you a rating from level one, two, three, four, and five, in each one of the different categories that we've identified. So management infrastructure, configuration management, updates and servicing, application, and endpoint security. An example of the output would be a findings and recommendations report to help facilitate movement down the maturity model. So let's talk management infrastructure level one. So in this level, you've identified a need for management of either users or devices. One thing to note about a management infrastructure is while the topic itself might be rather basic when it comes to some of the feature sets and configurations and you know path down the maturity model that we're gonna talk about later, it is incredibly important. Think of it like a house. While you have a basement in your house, it's not, it's not the thing that you think about being so critically important to your, your home stability. Much like your basement is your foundation to your house, we want to choose the right tool set, we want to pick the right features, we want to implement it in the right way. Just like you want your basement for your house built correctly without leaking water and being able to hold up your house, you want your management infrastructure to be able to do all the things that you want to enable in your organization with as little administrative effort as possible. Let's cover some benefits of what a management infrastructure will provide. A central view of your devices, so things like Active Directory. If you, if you think of Active Directory, you can go and look at a, a view of your devices, and even with Active Directory, you would get something like a basic asset inventory. You also have enabled initial configuration capabilities with something like Active Directory with startup scripts or logon scripts or group policy objects. Generally speaking, a management infrastructure is a foundation to facilitate many other aspects of strategic growth, whether it's in terms of size, 
or technology or collaboration, basic management infrastructure almost always is a requirement of that. So let's talk about what some examples of management infrastructure would include. Active Directory, you mentioned that a couple of times already, having a central repository for your users and your devices. Azure Active Directory can enable many, many benefits, but which we will talk about later in this video series. For this purpose though, Azure Active Directory is a cloud-based uh, directory service that can enable things, and for, for this video, we'll keep it simple, uh, collaboration as an example. Intune or Endpoint Manager, uh, maybe you're at the stage in your organization that you need a little more than Azure Active Directory or Active Directory can provide in terms of endpoint um, infrastructure, management infrastructures. Then we also have the traditional MECM, what used to be branded as SCCM Management, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. So what are some of the potential impacts of a management infrastructure? Well, improved security posture, control over user settings and features, computer settings and features, reduced administrative effort, and a means of collaboration. Okay, so just by having a management infrastructure in place, you've, you've opened up or enabled many impacts or benefits to having a management infrastructure at this point. Configuration for those and what it takes to actually deploy those are gonna be kind of a different piece to it. However, there's many examples that we can run through. Maybe you, you, you've, got, you've identified a need, you've got a handful of users, a handful of devices, and you've, you've determined that you don't know if antivirus is running, you don't know if you're getting patches on these PCs, you would like to push out the printer driver or you would like to automate pushing out your software for your accounting organization you've identified a need for a management infrastructure and here are some benefits outside of it. So where do you go from here, right? Well, there's some next steps that you can take. First, you need to define your need and your future state. And I put in there a palatable future state. Uh, as an example, determining what you need to do in the immediate now versus what you need to do that could be a couple of years from now are different things. However, they should be considered into a one to three year plan when it comes in terms of management infrastructure and what you're in need of. With that, you have to identify your timeline for when you need functionality to be operational, what the anticipated cost would be and how that aligns against the budget that you have allocated for a management infrastructure. Finally, once you have those things, you can determine the appropriate technology or platform that is required that would meet your need or your future state. So some next steps that we can help you with is we, as part of this roadmap, we're offering an assessment. It's two 90 minute sessions that we will lead. There's a list of questions ahead of time that have not only technology based questions, but process driven questions to identify where you are today and where you want to go. The output will be a findings and recommendations report, which will be your next step down to maturity month. And this concludes video number two in our 26 part video series. Many of the other videos will be much more in depth as the maturity model continues down the path. The initial phase is always just kind of the core basics. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.